Good evening. Well, welcome everyone to our midweek Bible study. At the beginning of the week, not the middle part of the week, I have quite a few announcements, so hang on. We'll go through them. Please keep Bill Bowles, 91 year old sister Ruth Stanley, in your prayers. She fell from her hip yesterday and is in River Oaks Hospital. Please keep Kim Tinka, Tim King, and family in your prayers and the loss of his brother Kevin King. Kevin passed away early this week. The funeral will be Friday in Georgia. Malcolm Barnett has had a uh, test in indicating possible carcinoma in lymph nodes and thyroid. He'll be going to Andy Anderson in December the 7th for further evaluation. Please keep Chris Gray in your prayers. He's struggling with seizures. He, human parent will be having therapy to help him recover from a fall he had last week. Kristen Shears will be having knee replacement in January. Casey Hurley will be having another surgery December the 7th for his hand. And Jimmy Barr will be having neck surgery December the 2nd. Also want to keep uh, Loretha Wallace in your prayers. She's had some tests done to find out why she is having headaches. The Berea Children's Home, we're, we're collecting kid-friendly cereal and Roman noodles to uh, to give to Berea Children's Home for Christmas. The Mash and College Christmas Party is December 4th at 5 p.m. Uh, at the home of Dustin and Cabell Jeffers. See Scott Morris for details. Mission Emphasis Day is December 5th. We'll have a regular morning Bible class and worship followed by fellowship meal. After the meal, we'll meet again at 12, at 12.45. We'll not be meeting at 5.30 p.m. Everyone's asked to bring drinks and desserts. The meal will be provided. Gospel meeting with North Brandon at North Brandon Church of Christ, December 3rd through the 5th with John DeBerry. Women's Christmas Party, December 12th, 3 to 5 p.m. Bring a wrapped ornament for a gift exchange. Golden Circles Christmas Party, December 18th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Door knocking, December 18th at 2 p.m. Youth News, December the 3rd through the 4th, is solved. Uh, anybody that plans to attend, please sign up on the list in the foyer by Sunday. There are printed schedules in the foyer. A lot going on, and I guarantee you all of these announcements I just made will be in your bulletin that's mailed out Friday or will be online probably before that. So make sure you check that, go check that, and, uh, and be aware of those people that are in need of prayers. As we begin, we begin, let's go to our Father in prayer. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your word. We're thankful, Father, that we can come before you this evening and study and, and understand and know the, uh, the things, that, the way that you like for us to live. We know, Father, that we have a lot of our, our loved ones that we traveled over the next uh, few days. We pray that you'll be with them and, and guide them through their travels. We pray, Father, that you'll be with those that uh, have had tests, that have not been in, in their favor and they're struggling with treatment. We pray that you'll be with them. We pray for the upcoming uh, procedures. We pray for the surgeries. We pray, Father, that uh, you'll just guide us all in everything we do. And help us to know, Father, that, uh, that you're with us and we can be comforted to know that. We're just so, so much that we can be thankful for, Father, in this week that the country is is celebrating Thanksgiving. We just pray that you'll help us not only for this week, but every day and every week, every hour to know that, that you're guiding and, and we should be thankful for everything we have in Christ's name. We pray. Amen. If you're using a song book and need to mark the invitation, the song will be 275. 275 will be the song after the Devo. Number four, we'll sing 216. 216, and we'll sing all three verses. Here we are, but straight.
to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. We'll start here this evening. Today I received a kind of a surprising uh, message from a friend that I probably haven't talked to in I don't know, maybe 20 years, 15 or 20 years, something like that. A long time ago. It's a family that we were close to for so, so very long. And it's a family that I love. Love, love, heart. It's a family that's been in Christ. It's a family that was not only a friend, but also fellow Christians. And in thinking about Thanksgiving, thinking about things we're thankful for, we need to be thankful for fellow Christians, for the body of Christ. I know Paul, he was very thankful for the brethren. We see there in Philippians chapter 1, starting there in verse 3, says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in prayer, always in every prayer of mine, make a request for you all the joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, he was, he was thankful for the brethren. He was thankful for God first and foremost. But he's thankful for the brethren, for that fellowship. It brought him joy, it brought him excitement. And, and in fact, it brought him so much excitement that he included this in every prayer. He was constantly, continuously thankful for the brethren, for the fellowship they had. And he wanted so many good things for them, for the brethren. To be confident is the very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think of this of you all because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, you are all protectors with me of grace. He wanted these brethren to be faithful to the very end, knowing that God was going to be faithful to them, to all of them. It didn't matter what Paul went through. It didn't matter what, he, what happened. It didn't matter about his chains. It didn't matter what anything came. They were all partakers of the grace that is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he says to them, For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you all with affection of Jesus Christ. We long for our brethren because they're our brethren. We should love them. We should want what's best for them. We should want their souls safe and secure for all eternity. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and, with, and without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. We should want our brethren to grow and to grow and to grow and to be more and more faithful in Christ day in and day out that we all may be found righteous before God on that great day. That's a desire that we should have for our brethren. It's a desire that we should have for them as we evangelize to those in our community, those around. We want to add them to this great loving family of God's people that are faithful before Him. And isn't it so comforting to know, as we see in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, that those faithful brethren, the faithful brethren of long ago and the faithful brethren of now, those faithful brethren as described here, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by some great cloud of witnesses, isn't it great to know that there are those that are faithful, those that have been faithful in their life before this life took them, and those that are faithful now, isn't it great to know those things? And with that knowledge, says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're thankful for the brethren. We're thankful for the fellowship. We're thankful for the unity. We're thankful for the opportunities we have to share with one another. And ultimately, we're thankful for Jesus and giving us the ability to be saved for being the author and the finisher of our faith. 
for dying on the cross and for giving us a hope in heaven with him. We have so much to be thankful for. Tonight we're focusing on two things. Being thankful for our brethren and being thankful for the salvation that is found in Christ Jesus. Tonight, as we evaluate our lives, have we shown our thankfulness to our brethren? Have we shown our thankfulness to our brethren by helping them in their walk with Christ? By being there for them? By being a true brother and sister in Christ? Have we shown thankfulness to God by being the Christians He's called us to be? Because if we were truly thankful, we would want to live that righteous life before Him. Let us remember every day, not just in this week, to be thankful for God, to be thankful for His Word, to be thankful for His people. If there's anything we can do for you tonight, whether prayers of the church or tonight, we're going to put on Christ in baptism. Please come as we stand and as we sing. Jesus calls us Help us to understand that uh, 